Welcome to Uncut Angling. It is November 2022. Ice fishing season is going to start right away here. And since I did not make it into local politics, I did try. All that I have to do now for the entire winter is go ice fishing. That is my reward or punishment, depending how you look at it. This is where I am right now. Eagle Nest Landing. This is on the Winnipeg River, halfway between Lake of the Woods and Lake Winnipeg. And while it is still very early in the season to have any ice whatsoever on main water bodies, like it's the Winnipeg River, so it'd be like a big, deep, fast flowing body of water that would be the last to get ice. What I am going to check on is a small stock trout lake just off the river here that has tiger trout in it. I've got my first ice toboggan here. I've got an oversized one so that if I were to fall through the ice, I could actually use it to support my entire body weight as a boat. There's another boat right there. This is a boat that doesn't really remember who I am because I have not used it all season because I've been so busy just spreading my wings and flying. They've got cabin rentals here year round, winterized. Also, I think multiple yurts maybe, at least one. Very cool. Skylight, you can watch the Northern Lights and shooting stars and whatever else one does. Okay, come on, let's go. Got boat rentals, um, amazing pike, walleye, and smallmouth bass fishing. So the water's gonna be like right on the cusp of freezing on the river, but we're hoping that on this quiet, small, secluded lake, there will be ice that we can put our ice fishing gear to use and kickstart the 2022-2023 ice fishing season. I should say this is not a public boat launch, so obviously you can use it if you're staying in a cabin here, but there's a public boat launch across the bay and another one around the corner beside the dam. So there are two public boat launches nearby Eagle Nest Landing if you want to access these waters. Otters, 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 otters. Otters are my favorite. Oh, I love otters. Right here. I'm gonna get some shots of these guys. Otters are the coolest things. They're so curious and affectionate and fun and loving. All an otter does is frolic in the water with its friends and go fishing. That's the best. I've gotta get a better sun angle on them, but they're over here. This is just so amazing because I can see what's in front of me. This is cabbage in front of me. See the cabbage coming up? The cabbage is 55 feet away, the cabbage is 50 feet away, the cabbage is 40 feet away. So on uncharted waters like this, come in here somewhat bravely. Those otters are way down there now. I'm only in five feet of water. Oh yeah, real thick cabbage. See the weeds in the water there? Probably a good late fall pike spot. Well, I'm gonna get a shot before I get too bold. That's pretty lame if that's all we got. Shoot. You gotta try once more. Otters are the craziest things because they're just invisible and you never see them. Oh, there they are, they're playing on the bank. We got it. We got it. Hey, we got it. Give me five. Right here. Hey, hello. We got it. Now we're getting back to Wasp Lake. It is right there. We are so close. Hoping for ice. We just need that much ice. We've had cold nights. Does that look like a human being path? I think it does look like a human being path. Ugh. Auger. Ice rods. What else? Power box. Don't be doing this, folks. I mean, I don't care if you drink beer, but just bring it home with you. Oh, I've also got my Strike Master power box, complete with speakers. Runs on 40 volt batteries. We're gonna listen to Prof's new song, Louisiana, all day. Cross your fingers for ice. Let's go look. Oh boy. 
Oh boy. There we go. A little bit of snow would be nice. Oh no. Oh no. not even close. I gotta make sure. It doesn't look like it's ready. But... Yeah, it's not ready. Unbelievable. I mean, this is inches deep. And it's not even, not even close. Oh my goodness. What are we gonna do, Phoenix? Oh, oh. We can use the toboggan as a boat? and the strike master as the motor. Okay, that's gonna float no problem. I got a couple ice rods obviously, which I could cast with, but ideally I'd find a longer rod back in the boat. So we're gonna go scrounge up whatever we can find there, get some more exercise, maybe pick up some more beer cans. Oh, 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 I fished my wish. Uh, maybe again. Uh, oh, how many tiger trout do we have, Phoenix? Shoot, still none. Okay, we have an open water fishing rod. It's a little bit bigger of a setup than I would prefer. What else do we have? Oh, we've got fly fishing gear. Typically with fly fishing, the bright lines is floating and dark line, whether it's dark green or dark blue, a sinking line. This one here you can see has two different colors, a light color for most of it, and then a dark color at the tip. And that is a sinking tip. So the base is floating and the tip is sinking. Typically later in the year, when you come into fall, you're gonna use more sinking lines because the fish are gonna be deeper on the average. And in spring, you're using more floating lines because the fish are shallower on the average. And fly fishing is basically the act of presenting a near weightless lure. I don't have any flies that would be trout size. This is obviously too big. And I don't have any hair that I... Oh! There's some hair that we could tie a fly with. Just need an afro pick. Oh, that's a spoon! That's not an afro pick. There's an afro pick. Okay. So we're just gonna get some miscellaneous hair here. This is gonna be a one material fly. See, it's coming together. Just need to get a little bit more. That's a great color. Anything in the black brown olive. Okay, probably all we need for a couple right there. We need thread. This will work. This is forceps, but we can use that to hold a hook. This is my essentials kit, all my favorite lures are in here and I think I've got some bulk hooks. This is what I want. A size eight or a size 10 woolly bugger. Look it up, woolly bugger. In black, brown or olive is the only fly you need for basically any trout, panfish, perch, bass. And it's so fun to say, woolly bugger. Okay, so we've got the hook in there. This is a size eight. I don't need to check that counter. I should check it once more. Okay, we're gonna check it quickly. Sometimes I lose track. It still says zero. Usually when you lose track, you get up to 100. The first thing you do is you start the thread on the hook, wrap it back over itself, just so it's secure. Then you can trim that tag end. And then you need to do a foundation of thread on the whole hook. And that is just gonna secure all your materials later on. Otherwise they tend to spin on the smooth shank of the hook. So just wrap one, layer next to the other basically up to the head gonna just cheat back to the end here again one wrap beside the other nice and tight to where the shank starts to turn into the gap of the hook i'm going to take a good chunk of this to use for the tail and what i want to do is i want to just align these fibers so that they're all on the same plane and i want a short bushy tail traditionally for a woolly bugger the tail is the length of the shank so i can measure it up like that 
And rather than just trying to wrap once, because then I'm just gonna push it all the way around, I'm just gonna do two loose wraps to hold it in place and then pull it tight. So now I've locked that onto the top of the hook. I'm gonna trim it on an angle so that when I cover it up later, it's tapered and we can cover it up easy as opposed to an abrupt cut that would be very hard to cover with thread. So there we go, I'm cutting it at a very sharp angle. There we go, I've got the tail tied on, the excess of it wrapped up. We're gonna use the same material, but in a dubbing style to build the body. So I need to make a loop here. Okay, so I wrapped the thread forward. I'm gonna secure the loop on these forceps so that I just have a holder for that loop. Okay, so now you're gonna see why I have this as a loop here. And it's because I'm going to fill that loop with the entire material that's gonna end up making up the body. So I'm gonna grab just a loose tuft of hair and I'm gonna put it between the two strands in that loop and then slide it up. Again, I'm gonna grab just a chunk of loose hair, put it between that loop and then stack it up. Grab another one, put it between that loop, stack it up, between that loop, stack it up. It's in there very loosely. We're gonna tighten that up in a second. Again, open the loop, put the material in there, stack it up. We've got all this material that's in here loosely in between that loop, and now I'm gonna start spinning that thread so that it grabs that material and locks it in. It's basically gonna spin it and make a rope that's gonna be very tight and hold that material in place. And then I can pull a lot of it out, coming out, coming out, and that's fine because look at how much is still left behind. That's our body, okay? So now I can start wrapping that. Starting at the tail, and I'm going to wrap forward. One wrap in front of the other, all the way up towards the head. I'm basically at the head already, and I'm just continuing to pull that material back away from the head. Take my thread again to tie that off. Let's cut this off. This is where you do just a bunch of wraps to lock everything up and seal it up um, this is called a whip finish. I put two fingers against the thread like this, and essentially it's like a bunch of overhand knots in a row. So I just did three or four. I'm gonna pull it tight, lock it up, and then I'm gonna do another sequence of that, three or four, and pull it tight to lock it up. And I'm gonna trim the tag in nice and close. You gotta admit, that looks like a little bug, or a little minnow, or a little leech. It looks like trout food. Get some glue on there. I'm gonna tie a couple more and then we're gonna crawl into this lake. Okay, I'll talk to you later, Phoenix. Oh, you're coming? Okay. We've arrived. Man, the water looks low. Like, I wonder if a beaver dam broke or something. Oh! We need a full boat. We don't need ice rods. Finding a perfect rock is the key to a good anchor. <laughs> Phoenix, come here. Good girl, right up, right up, yep. Good girl. All right, we're golden. The best knot uses the least amount of rope, but then you're flirting with the worst knot. That looks pretty good. I said I wanted Prof Louisiana going. Speaker power box. Of course, I still use Dakota Lithium for all my main power needs. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. That's it. There's our fly. This lake actually does have a really good depth map by Angler's Edge Mapping. Like most small lakes, it's deeper in the middle and it's shallower closer to the shore. And let's see how this operates as an engine output. One mile an hour. We're all going hungry with isolation to feel some fine confrontation. Is it possible to have faith in patience? You can't breathe when we're all contagious. I don't know how this all unfolds. Time's fast and I'm getting old. Going deaf from the things I'm told. Don't know where my head's gonna go. The moon is low and so am I. I'm gonna give it one more shot then it's off to Louisiana. Here comes the edge, right here, 10 feet away, 
Now if I go down, I'm still in weeds straight off the boat. We'll watch any second. All these weeds are going to disappear because I'm pointed straight down the bank here. So as soon as those weeds disappear, boom, that's where I want to set up. See how that weed just ended? Now watch, if I point the transducer back towards the shore, there's that weed edge that I am panning into. And of course it's all right behind me, but I am basically right on it. There's a fish, there's a fish. 30 feet away this way, this direction. It's still there, 28 feet. Why is that fish just hanging out there? Ain't no more time to be polite. I got my head on a swivel. But who expects snakes in the middle? One for the pigs that were raised that way. Take control back on top of getting paid. Oh, hooked up, right here. Ooh, we got one, we got one, we did it, we did it, we did it. Drone battery is dying. Tiger trout on, it is not a giant. There are much, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! Classic, it's not a giant. There it goes, swimming away on the live scope. There he is, right there, swimming away, 30 feet away. Uh, 35 feet away, 40 feet away. 45 feet away, it's just getting down to the bottom, 50 feet away, oh, what a heartbreaker. That actually hurts me. I gotta move just a little bit more. Is it possible for us all to get radicalized? I don't know how I'm gonna make it through another one of these nights. Oh, that was a fish. I saw in the live scope. For sure. For sure. Shoot. If I didn't see it on the live scope, I would have thought it was just weeds, but on the live scope, clearly came flying up out of the weeds and kissed it. That fish was shallow because I'm not able to even fish in there. There's so much weeds. Nice green cabbage. It's green. Anchor. Okay, let's move down the bank again. This is still the same battery. Obviously the water is a lot easier to cut through than ice is because this has been running a long time. Okay, let's try that. Two from a family that came as slaves Still haven't got justice, been forbade Uh oh, is that a fish? That is a fish! It's just tiny! Oh! This could be the only fish of the day! <laughs> it is tiny but we'll take it in its amazing co- oh! <laughs> Amazing colors, I was gonna say. Devastating. Okay, I gotta retie, just because my tag end slipped out of my eyelet. There's no way you can see that. I'll show you what I mean. Because conveniently, I've got this massive fish hook right here. So I take my line, I put it through the eyelet, and then this is a quick fisherman's knot, which I use all the time. It's not the strongest knot, but it's fast. And you want your breaking point to be at your hook anyway. So there, I spun like maybe five or six times, go through the bottom, and then go back through that hole we just made. And that is either called an improved clinch knot or a fisherman's knot. Pull it down, okay? There's my tag end hanging off of there. And this is called tucking your tag end. You just put that tag end back through the eyelet like that. Everything is streamlined then. If you're bass fishing, you're not gonna grab weeds on there. And even if you're pike or musky fishing with a leader, if you put whatever you have for a tag end, even if it's wire through back through a swivel or something, but you get that uh, catch point to be pointed the other way and then it's not grabbing stuff in the water. Cut my tag end relatively close. So now let's uh, tuck our Phoenix fly and our tag end and everything inside the mouth of a bitch tiger trout. Three from a family that's hungry in the streets, tents in the city, been growing every week. Every day is something new, I just can't believe. I got the anger in my heart, been burning in the heat. Oh, that's a fish. Freaking right, this is a fish. It's not big, but we're gonna put one in the boat. I'm not going for the net, I'm going for the boat flip. Come here, come here, come here. I got one, Phoenix. That is caught on your own fur. Look at this, look at, there it is. So cool, <laughs> a beautiful tiger trout. So small, he's gonna be hard to hold. There he is, majestic. Looks like the first one I lost. Cute little female. All fish have to be released here, so we are just going to give it a perfect, just cinematic release right like that. Perfect. 
Oh. You know, we didn't really expect to find ice today, but the puddles are freezing and the ditches are freezing and it won't be long now. Thanks for watching on Kadangling. Good night. Oh my goodness. I set my auger down beside the truck. I set my auger down in the grass beside the truck. Ah! Luckily, I do have my backup ice auger, so we are good to go. I think I've got some shells here. I had this along in case we came across a grouse, but this does work to punch holes. So we are set. Come on, I'm kidding. Obviously I brought my freaking auger, I'm not an idiot.